Okay, let's talk about the three steps we need to take to solve this type of equation in algebra. So first of all, what type of equation is this? Well, again, if you're in any sort of algebra course, whether that be Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Intermediate Algebra, even Pre-Calculus, doesn't make a difference. Maybe with the exception of Pre-Algebra students, uh, this might be a little bit uh, advanced for you, but stick around, you'll learn something anyways. So my question to you is, what type of equation uh, are we dealing with? So if you know the answer to that, put that into the comment section, but I'm gonna show you exactly uh, the steps we need to take, and precisely there'll be three to solve this type of equation. I'm gonna get to all this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And if you are struggling in math, I'm telling you right now, you can learn math, okay? The one thing that I've learned over all these years is that all students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, you gotta be willing to work hard at it, okay? So study, do all the practice problems, et cetera. The second thing you need is great math instruction, and that is like clear, easy to understand math instruction that's very, very thorough. That's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. By the way, if you're preparing for any sort of test, with a math section, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, teacher certification, uh, ASVAB. I have a huge um, library of test prep courses along with homeschool courses. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. That helps me out big time. Okay, so let's get into the three steps to solve this type of equation. Again, what type of equation is that or is this? Uh, well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay, so this equation happens to be a quadratic equation, a quadratic equation. So why is it a quadratic equation? Well, we have this x plus one squared. If I uh, take this x plus one and multiply it, okay, x plus one times x plus one, you're gonna get a nice lovely polynomial. Uh, but if you don't recognize this as a polynomial, so let's just go ahead and do this here. This is x squared plus, uh, let's see here, we'll get a two x plus one, and then that'll be multiplied by two here. So um, it's not important that I expand this because if you start multiplying this out, you don't want to do that, okay? So, but the main idea here is to recognize that this is a polynomial equation uh, and it's a degree two, all right? This is a polynomial and it's degree two, okay? Now we could see that better if I was to multiply these together here because I would end up with an X squared, right? That's what it means, the degree, the highest power, is two, so that's a degree two polynomial, and by definition, that makes it a quadratic equation, and there's a, this is a huge, uh, very, very, very important topic in algebra. You gotta know how to solve quadratic equations, and they come in all different types of flavors, so I'm gonna talk about specifically how to solve this particular problem, but uh, anyways, if you didn't know um, that this was a quadratic equation, now you know. All right, so, what do we know about quadratic equations? Well, the first thing you need to understand is that uh, all quadratic equations will always, always, always have two solutions. Okay, now sometimes there'll be two real number solutions or you can have imaginary complex number solutions as well. Okay, but there'll always be two. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now here, uh, what I have right uh, here is the different tools we can bring to a quadratic equation problem. Now, sometimes you can take the square root of both sides of a quadratic equation to solve. That's a great technique if you can use it. Now, if you can't use that, then you want to look to see if you can factor. Factoring is also a great technique, but sometimes you can't do this and sometimes you can't do this. Well, in all situations, okay, if you can't solve a quadratic equation by taking the square root of both sides or by factoring, you can always, always, always solve all quadratic equations through the quadratic formula. Okay, so this is like our backup plan. Uh, so again, this is a whole sub separate issue on how to master the quadratic formula. And there's uh, something called completing the square, which is like the long version of uh, the quadratic formula. And it's something you need to know. And uh, students get uh, kind of confused with this as well. It's a lot of work involved. But uh, anyways, if you are studying quadratic equations right now, 
Um, I have a ton uh, more additional videos on my YouTube channel, but my most thorough work will be like in any one of my algebra courses, like Algebra 1 and beyond Algebra 2. I have pre-calculus. So, um, you know, again, if you need additional help beyond this, check out the, that stuff. Okay, so let's get into this equation now. So we know it's a quadratic equation, so which tool are we going to use here? Well, we're going to actually use this uh, technique right here. We're going to take the square root of both sides. But before we do that, we're going to have to clean this up a bit. And now let's get into these three steps to solve this problem. All right, so I know this is a quadratic equation, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I got something squared equals a number. So anytime uh, when you're dealing with a quadratic equation, you have something that is squared over here that has your variable, and it's equal to a number, okay? that is a great uh, candidate to be able to take the square root of both sides, okay? So let me give you a very simple um, example. Uh, x squared is equal to 4. The easiest way to solve this is just to take the square root of both sides. This is a quadratic equation. It's a super simple uh, quadratic equation. But again, this is the setup. There's got to be a number here and then your variable situation. So you can see here, I can get there, but here's the deal. I can't take the square root of sides, uh, the square root of both sides yet, because I need to get this uh, part isolated first. Okay, uh, x plus one squared. I have to get this by itself uh, before I can take the square root of both sides. I got this two hanging out there, so we need to do something with that two first. So what can, uh, what do I need to do? Well, let's divide two by both sides of the equation. Remember in algebra. Uh, whatever you do to one hand, uh, you could do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides. So the first step here is to divide both sides of the equation by 2, okay? And why am I doing that? Again, I want to just get this expression all by itself. That's what I need over here equal to some number, okay? That's the setup. So that is what we have here, okay? So the result of step 1 brings us down to x plus 1 squared is equal to 4. Again, of course, that is 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay? All right. So at this point, we're like, okay, now we can take the square root of both sides. Yes, that is our next step, and that's what we're going to do. So that's step 2. Okay? So when you take the square root of x plus 1 squared, okay, x plus 1 squared, it's just going to be whatever's inside uh, right here. So that's x plus 1. Let me make that perfectly clear for you. If I'm taking the square root, if I have x, uh, uh, square root of x squared, okay, that's just going to be x, okay? So uh, again, here, uh, this is something squared. I'm taking the square root of it. It's just going to be x plus 1, okay? So hopefully that is clear. And then over here, when I take the square root of 4, this is where we want, we don't want to use the principal square root. The square root of 4, we're going to have is positive and negative 2. So this is a lot of confusion here. The square root of 4, a lot of you would say, well, that's just 2. Okay, That is true. This is called the principal square root, and it's just the positive version. But when we're dealing with quadratic equations and you take the square root of a positive real number, always use both signs, Okay, positive and negative 2, because positive 2 times positive 2 is 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 is also positive 4. So the square root of 4 is um, both uh, 2 and negative 2, okay? You need to have both roots represented there, both signs, okay? So x plus 1 now is equal to positive and negative 2. So this is going to set us up for our last step, step 3, okay? So we need to interpret this equation, and this is really two separate equations that we need to set up uh, to solve for x. So the first one is going to be x plus 1. This positive and negative 2 is really the same thing as a positive 2 and negative 2. We just write it as positive negative 2. But this equation is saying x plus 1 is equal to a positive 2. So you have to write it out explicitly like this. And then x plus 1 is also equal to negative 2. So you have to write that out like this. OK, so x plus 1 is equal to negative 2. x plus 1 is also equal to positive 2. Then we, uh, we solve the respective equations. So here I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So I have x is equal to 1. That's 1 solution to my quadratic equation. Then over here, I subtract 1 from both sides. I get x is equal to negative 3. That would be my second solution, uh, or 0, or roots. There are all kinds of fancy names that go along with the solutions to quadratic equations or polynomials. But here are your two solutions. x is equal to 1, and x is equal to negative 3. 
And there you go, okay? I'm curious, how many of you out there uh, already knew how to solve this? And you're like, yeah, let me just see if I know how to do this. If you were able to solve this, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face with a good old 1983 flat top haircut. That was very cool back in the day. I don't see many people uh, wearing those uh, haircuts. It's kind of a shame. And all of us that did wear that haircut probably don't have that much hair up here to wear it. And yeah, maybe I'm speaking for myself. But that was pretty impressive, but not as impressive as your ability to solve this thing if you were able to just like, you know, do this perfectly, okay? That means that you are doing uh, very nicely in your algebra course, but don't get overconfident. Uh, remember, the way to really, really learn math is to do a lot of proms. Practice makes perfect. So don't do a few proms, challenge yourself with more and more challenging proms. Okay, so, uh, but again, if this little video helped you out, please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you are new to my YouTube channel, I've got over a thousand plus videos from basic math to advanced, advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of my uh, content that I have on my channel. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.